Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Melrose, Assisting Pastor for Pastoral Care here at First United Methodist Church of Madison. This is the time when our relationships with everyone seem to be so severely strained. One wonders if it might be as in the tradition of our desert foremothers and forefathers, just gone off into the desert, found a monastery, and sit and contemplate and get away from it all. Of course, such is not the call of Christianity or our God, but it is a time of wrestle and struggle sometimes. In that spirit, I wander around in my reading, and one of the people I've settled on for a rare occasion comments is a fellow named John Pavlovitz. He writes from what some might call the progressive end of the progressive wing of Christianity. And he's writing one piece in the spirit of the God is dead theology of the 60s, if any of you remember that. How could there be a God if there was such civil unrest and such strife and such search for peace and forces against peace? Sounds familiar, perhaps? Pavlovitz, in one of his recent writings, one of his blogs, says in the spirit of, I can't adult anymore, I just can't Christian anymore. What does he mean by that? Well, lifting some of his words and paraphrasing them, he says, I just can't be a part of this toxic behavior, of this predatory behavior, of human relations that violate human rights expression overt racism, of white supremacy, demonizing immigrants. I can't be part of a faith that puts the nation first before our God. Is Christianity at all helpful, he asks? As we interact with people, he doesn't see any civility or decency or compassion or mercy just anywhere. No conversation, it seems. Christianity is, is, is just lost. Why bother? It doesn't help us in our relationships, he wonders. And this was a question picked up in another Facebook posting that I saw under a friend of mine who had just read this Pavlovitz piece and said, maybe God is out. Maybe we're just trying to work on relationships to which uh, the pastor of Wise Council responded. It certainly can look that way sometimes. So Christianity is lost. It's all about relationships. And yet that's a unifying and tying piece, I think, because it takes me back to a definition of Christianity I was given back when I was in boarding school in 1960 in a freshman theology class. As it was told to me then in those 1960 words, religion is a relationship between man and God. I might reword it, if you will, in this way, Christianity or religion is a relationship between God and the people of God and all that God has created and breathed life into. So from this one group or the other, no, Jesus came that we might all have life. Genesis tells us that God created all things and all people breathed God's very self into all of us so that each of us are a part of God, an expression of God, the image of God, made in the image of God. Each of us is part of God in our own unique ways. And beyond that, our biblical stories in both the Hebrew Bible that we call the Old Testament and on our Old Testament we call the New Testament, the writings of and about Jesus, there are so many stories and historical incidents where the God of God's people urges God's people to move beyond, reach out, open relationships, fulfill needs elsewhere. One pastor that both Mark and I know, pastors a church in Michigan, had a sermon last week, which was interesting. He took a passage from Mark and he said, this might be what Jesus's inaugural sermon was to inaugurate the kingdom of God. And he lifted up some things about that. He said, Jesus stood for 
what Jesus stood for, we find in his life, in, in the way he lived. God made known in Jesus Christ what life would be like. He didn't tell us, Jesus did not tell us, rather his life revealed, showed us. And here are several things that his life revealed. If I tick them off somewhat quickly, no one needs special degrees in leadership to be part of this beloved community. There is gender equality. It is open to all races and genders. There is no more outcast. Children belong in the center and are to be loved. Religious rules must never get in the way of mercy, compassion, and justice, thinking particularly of the many rules in the Torah around what's permitted on the Sabbath. The systems of oppression must be turned over in the way that Jesus turned over the tables in the temple on what we call Palm Sunday. It comes to us nonviolently, and leadership is measured in humility, strength, and service. Loving our enemy is the only way to convert them. And Easter shows us that that way keeps coming back and coming back and coming back, that the world, how much it tries to suppress it or stamp it out, cannot kill it. The standards of living that Jesus showed us and his vision of what the beloved community looks like goes on. So our relationships, they are so important. It is how we, though separate in worship and in church right now and in keeping safe, we still relate through mediums such as this, through phone calls, through Zoom meetings, through so many other ways. Even in places of living in isolation where some of us are shut down or because of health and other issues, confine ourselves, restrain the outreach and the contact we have with others. It is in and through us that so much of God's kingdom is seen in how we relate. Whatever the changing nature of relationships looks like in whatever your context, God is there. We are living images of God. Can we practice some of these qualities already mentioned, even in this time of pandemic, when we're bordering on the pandemics of domestic terrorism, the continuing pandemic of the actual disease, the, the fear not only of the virus growing, but we are told violence could erupt in our country at any time. Can we do this? This is how Jesus lived his three years of ministry. And then the disciples turned apostles, picked it up, and they've taken it from that time to this as God moves in mysterious ways. We at First Church, we're a church that expresses and preaches and therefore lives hope seven days a week. And may it be for each of us today, as we as the Church of Jesus Christ go on, that in our relationships with each other, how we are is important. May our relationships reveal God's love, God's light, God's care, mercy, and justice and compassion to each other and to the world. May it be so. Amen.